Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Allie Kane, and I will be the moderation moderator for our presentation. I am part of FLOR's Office of Technology, which focuses on using science and innovative engineering technology to build a better world. Our engineers, designers, and experts, our people, are at the core of our success. Continuing our series of data-driven discussions, our subject matter experts today will talk about FLOR's Building Information Modeling, or BIM, project lifecycle support. The webinar will focus on BIM support from design through construction, including analytics, collaboration, and communication. We'll look at some of the digital challenges facing projects today and how BIM processes can be leveraged to meet these demands. All right, so let's meet our speakers this morning. So we have two subject matter experts with us, like I mentioned. Um, first, I'd like to introduce John Atterbury. John has been FLOOR's BIM manager since 2016, focusing predominantly on the advanced life sciences and manufacturing industries. He has over 15 years of experience in BIM execution and process development and operates primarily out of FLOOR's Greenville, South Carolina office. Additionally, John has over 25 years of construction management experience with a focus on prefabrication and installation processes. Outside of work, John enjoys outdoor activities like camping and fishing and spending quality time with his family. Joining John this morning is Yaroslav Stepanik, or Yarek. Located in our Flor Glavice office in Poland, Yarek is a senior structural design supervisor, subject matter expert, Discipline Application Specialist and Innovation Catalyst. He has over 20 years of experience in energy and urban solutions from feed to EPCM, along with global training, standardization, and innovation. He's focused on data-centric execution, BIM, integrated project delivery, lean construction, and 3D plant software. Yarek's hobbies include visiting new countries, especially Central Europe, as he enjoys studying the culture and architecture. He is also a professional musician. Floor has a strong safety-driven culture. As such, it is customary for us to begin our meetings with a brief safety topic. So now I'd like to ask Yarek to please unmute his line and share that safety topic with us this morning before we begin the main presentation. Thank you, Ali. There are three layers in the BIM process to assure HSC health, safety, and environment in designing. The first layer in design for safety. In this process, we use BIM authoring tools to meet all health and safety requirements, described in practices and manuals. There is also a place where you can check the size of escape routes and access to equipment. The second layer is the review with the client. In this process, we use visualization to review all locations and find out if they are in line with customer requirements and best practices. All comments are marked in the model and then implemented. The third layer is safety in construction. In this process, we use visualization and schedule to predict and mark all hazardous points and to carry out the necessary simulations. Additionally, based on the model, it is possible to conduct virtual training during which the employee gets to know the site before entering the construction site. The incorporation of health and safety into beam processes increases the level of safety. Now, let me hand over the spotlight to John for today's main topic. Thank you, Yark. Now, I would like to quickly walk through our agenda for today. We're going to look at the project life cycle flow diagram developed by FLOOR and dive into the BIM processes and how it supports the project life cycle. We will look at an overview of BIM support for design efforts, and then we will take a detailed look at BIM support for construction to include specific examples of construction, BIM support workflows, such as material management, construction planning support, which will include advanced phase work phase planning, pool planning, and last planner principles. And then we will look at 4D, 5D support, and finally site integration. We will then have a quick wrap up session followed by questions. But first we will look at some basic BIM concepts and review the digital transformation at FLOOR. 
What is BIM? Building Information Modeling, or BIM, is a process to establish, implement, and execute a digital representation of the project with a defined process to manage 3D geometry content and 3D model item data content, or the I, information in BIM. Floor has been executing BIM for over 27 years using such tools as Integraph and Autodesk. BIM is not a new concept at Floor, but is an evolving area in the market, and Floor is committed to continuous improvement and innovation to meet the expanding project needs and support digitalization challenges. Now I would like to walk through the BIM project lifecycle chart developed by Floor. BIM is a process that needs to be set up at the front end to support the project throughout the project lifecycle. At the center, you have the establishment of the BIM processes, which includes the BIM Execution Plan, or BEP, which documents the project, key BIM requirements, and any other support BIM processes required to execute the project. BIM management, and then it also includes the management of a federated model, which is a, a combined discipline or trade model that will be used for coordination and collaboration and the establishment of the Common Data Environment, or CDE. The color wheel represents the expected delivers, deliverables to be uh, executed on the project, supported from the established BIM processes with key inputs and outputs of project data, seen in the diagram as blocks along the edges with two-way arrows to the center, which support these expected deliverables throughout the project lifecycle. The corners of the triangle represent the key BIM elements required in the execution of these BIM requirements on a project. It consists of a BEP development and implementation, team collaboration and coordination, and BIM data management. The process flows from the design, starting at conceptual design through detailed design, to build, which is construction support. This is where we're going to spend a good deal of time today discussing in detail to operate, which consists of the O&M and facility management support. I would now like to review the key items in the BIM deliverables in a little more detail. The three key elements, the corners of the triangle briefly mentioned earlier, consist of a clear and concise BIM execution plan, or BEP, to be delivered to all project participants and managed throughout the project, as it will be the all-inclusive and intended to be a living document in the project to be updated over time. Yark will walk through this in detail later in the presentation. The key next is the key, the next key is coordination and collaboration, which is the established processes and scheduled regular meetings up front for alignment with the team. The key is to maintain active participation and supported by management throughout the project lifecycle. The final item is an established CDE, or Common Data Environment, a process to manage the data flow from the 3D models and have an established key data to be collected throughout the BIM process, from design to construction and later for facility management. Now I will quickly review the key deliverables along the color wheel. You will see, uh, starting with Digital Twin, which is a digital representation of the project, and then you have 4D related to schedule, 5D related to cost, and 6D related to the asset facility management or uh, life cycle asset management, and 7D the facility management, followed by virtual reality, augmented reality, and finally field construction support, which we will discuss in detail later in the presentation. Specific processes will vary based on the specific deliverables required by the project BIM requirements as documented in the BEP. Now I'd like to take a, a moment to look at the key data inputs and outputs related to the BIM process in a little more detail. BIM execution effectiveness is driven by the strict management of the key inputs and outputs to support and ensure data quality and effective collaboration. This is, key, this is a key part of the BIM plan to ensure that it is aligned up front to support the project execution and will support the flow through the project lifecycle. Now I will take a quick 
moment to review these. You've got data integrity or the requirements or standards for the project. You could have some internal data requirements such as Unison at floor or external requirements such as OmniClass or Kobe, master format, things of that nature. You've also got the BIM authoring tools. They're, those are the specific 3D platforms like Revit, Civil 3D, Smart Plant, or Plant 3D that will support the project's 3D design and support the 3D construction models. Then you have the collaboration and visualization. BIM 3D integration of all the project models and BIM visualizations to include clash management, data visualization, and rendering and simulation. These are all key elements to the collaboration on the project. Then you have the constructability, which includes uh, field mobility, and we will spend some time later to talk about this in detail. And you have validation support using field forms and checklists supported by the BIM database to track the efforts on the project. And finally, data transfer, which supports O&M and facility management data transfers. This is also supports the BIM analytics on the project. Now I will turn it over to Yark, who will walk us through some specific BIM support for the design phase. Thank you, John. In this part, we will focus on design, including BIM kickoff meeting and key elements of BIM execution plan. The main factor of the BIM project in advanced technologies and life sciences is the building and everything that fills it. In accordance with the acronym BIM, Building Information Modeling. Therefore, the primary discipline is architectural that leads and requires certain software BIM authoring tools, which we will be talking about. Fluor delivers a fit for purpose designs for leading brands and new innovators in a wide range of manufacturing and technology industries. Drawing on cross industry benchmarks, lean manufacturing concepts, and sustainability standards, Fluor supports clients' product goals with cost competitive solutions. There are advanced materials, data centers, fast moving consumer goods, food and beverage, semiconductors, smart batteries, and specialty products. Implemented beam processes and well managed beam data lead the way. There are three main pillars of data management data integrity, data transfer, and data visualization. All the data must remain intact and unchanged between authorized updates. The CDE common data environment is a single source of truth, and there is no room for duplicate. Data, asset, no content. Data integrity is multifaceted normalization with a standardization of items such as the LOD level of development in product stages, material definitions, object construction classification, and other attributes, which will be used for data reporting and quantification purposes. Data transfer is divided into two main areas, BIM assets and BIM analytics. The key document that Fluor uses on every project to define model data transfers is an attachment to the BEP, BIM Execution Plan, called the Data Model Requirements. This document is intended to answer the data requirements as defined in EIR, Exchange Information Requirement, and AIR, Asset Information Requirements, according to ISO 19650. It is a roadmap for beam data transfer, necessary both for asset data in operation and maintenance and facility management, and for data analysis of big data, small data, and as a repository of historical data. Data visualization 
accelerates the understanding of the processes taking place in CDE with a focus on well-defined attributes. All participants can view materials, actions defined in schedule, and clashes in a single source of truth, the CDE. In addition, data visualization could be separated from a model by using data from the model in conjunction with additional asset databases for visualization in business analysis tools. We will talk about it shortly. Criteria for previously mentioned LOD, level of development, are set forth by the American Institute of Architects in Project Building Information Modeling Protocol Form G202. Article 2 defines the model level of development based on defining the maturity of the model representation geometry and attributes data. Specific standards are contained in the BIM Forum specification, updated each year. LOD establishes design development scope in coordination with clients, guides project teams in achieving project goals, and accommodates BIM users from design through facility turnover. ISO 19650 states considering the level of geometry and the level of information. There is also a new term, level of information need, as an aggregation of both. Let's look at the beginning. The collaboration and communication mentioned earlier are the key success factors. The BIM support goal is to leverage the use of the BIM process to increase quality and to streamline access to and management of project and asset information. BIM process seeks to reduce construction costs, reduce the risk of project delays, variation of cost overruns, and increase the project stakeholders' understanding of the project. Therefore, it is important to invite all BIM participants to BIM kickoff meeting at the beginning and then to organize regular alignment meetings. BIM manager leads these meetings and communicate the BIM goals through a detailed BIM execution plan. The key BIM participants are owner, client, design BIM manager, and construction BIM manager, both supported by BIM coordinators, BIM authors, engineers, and trade partners through participating BIM representatives. These meetings allowed everyone to discuss BIM issues and define the relevant data, including who is responsible for delivering it, which data is crucial, when it is to be included in the CDE, and what its format should be. During these meetings, deliverables are established and explained. As a new partner appear, additional alignment meetings are organized. Let's look at the BIM execution plan, known as BEP or BXP. The BEP serves as the master execution document for BIM on the project, defines uses for BIM, such as design model authoring, model design coordination, and release for fabrication, along with a detailed design of the process for execution BIM throughout the project lifecycle. During BIM setup process is used the BIM execution checklist that outlines BIM activities to be completed for a particular project and is supported by the BIM responsibility matrix, which identifies the responsible resources. The BEP should be initiated at the beginning of the project and be maintained, updated, as required throughout the project lifecycle. The final project BEP will need to be aligned with the client, the participating design firms, the con general contractor or construction manager, and participating construction trade contractors and key vendors. The BEP 
is a living document and should be updated periodically through the project lifecycle to document updates in BIM workflows or capture changes as BIM participants are added to the project. The intent of the BP is to have shared ownership across project team members. At a minimum, the BEP will outline the following requirements. BEP purpose and basic project information, specific BIM goals and BIM users, roles and responsibilities, hardware and software requirements, level of development, BIM deliverables and requirements, BIM information exchanges, BIM collaboration procedures like collaboration strategy, trade participants, model partitions and construction work areas, design review coordination and documentation, and model content management. And there are also other important bullets like clash management and detection, formally started during detailed design, interface between engineering, vendors and contractors, information on the exchange of data, including 3D models, where their exchange space will be, how often they will be updated, change management expectation, federated model management, and field coordination alignment. Now, John will walk through some specific BIM support for construction. Excellent, thank you, Yarek. Now I'm gonna walk through some specific project examples of BIM support for construction. The industry has seen considerable growth and maturity in the use of BIM to support construction execution, and we will look at some specific examples today. First, I will focus on BIM related to coordination and collaboration, aspects that help the increase of the team's involvement, collaboration, and project visibility, which supports and facilitates the flow of information from design through construction, management of the BIM model, and BIM change and project changes, and supports further development of the model data. Project execution is dependent on the key information being available to the right person at the right time. BIM tools can support the flow of that information in a productive and efficient way. BIM can also support the incorporation and collaboration of the subcontractors LOD 400 models, which is the construction and fabrication level models, delivered in a way that teams can leverage and support detailed construction planning activities, such as uh, floor advanced work phase planning, which includes construction work package and installation work package management based on last planner principles. BIM can also support the ability to establish key processes and utilize BIM related tools that will help maximize collaboration around issue tracking, which can be linked directly to the BIM models. I will now walk through some specific examples of linking BIM design and construction models to specific issues and tracking methods, which help to facilitate internal, client, and subcontractor model reviews. BIM models can be used to conduct and manage specific design and construction reviews with the ability to link specific issue items directly to the BIM federated model. By capturing specific items that need to be addressed by the teams with direct links to the 3D model and the issue track, it can help ensure that the items are completed timely and that the information is available for specific status reports and construction management. Increasing visibility to BIM related items and making them accessible to all team members is critical to the efficient and productive coordination and collaboration efforts. In addition to BIM coordination items that support, you also have some project level tools that can be used. Active construction model reviews can be supported by available Navisworks plugins, which can support the linking of the model issues with an issue tracker for management and support of issue resolution. 
Also available are punch lists or site issue management tools, which are available in collaborative platforms, which support active participation in site issue management. Also, we have custom forms and checklists available in mobile devices, allowing for digitalization of the information. BIM can also support access to key documents directly in the field by the use of field tablets, which will assist in getting the information collected from the field back into the BIM process. Now we'll look at some specific challenges and key focus areas related to the key flow of construction information to the BIM process and support for key construction execution activities. The BIM construction support elements can be looked at in terms of the analytics and collaboration support. Analytics consists of material takeoffs or MTO that's supported with powerful visualization that can be used to support the project for what is included in the project from an estimate standpoint and to support change control management, which can assist in visualizing changes with the 3D and cost impact evaluations. Specific construction sequencing planning with key material identification and tracking and support for the short term and long term planning efforts. On the collect on the collaboration side, the BIM can tools can help support with visualization of the construction work areas or CWAs, which are established during design and detailed analysis of the construction work packages, CWP and installation work packages. IWP planning and management and processing based on the last planner principles, as well as provide powerful visualization support for construction pool planning. BIM processes and tools can provide valuable support for construction that can help leverage the information started during design and carry it through the construction phase in an efficient and productive way. Next slide. In this example, you can see a traditional construction weekly planning session worksheet that can be sorted, that can be supported by powerful visualization for the work being performed. BIM technologies can be applied to lean last planner based principles, adding visualization that helps teams to make key decisions and increase the accuracy of the information. By reviewing the models, by the project designated CWAs, teams can focus on key priority areas and align with construction sequencing goals. Now we will take a quick look at the flow from design to construction related to the advanced work phase planning. As discussed previously, BIM can support the process from CWA definition through construction, CWP and IWP planning and execution. It can provide a link between the digital information and the actions required in the field in a way that it supports powerful visualization and organization of the data in the way that supports real time information. It also supports the capture of key construction information from the field back to the BIM environment to support planning and turnover activities. Now I will look at how BIM can specifically support this flow of data and information using BIM technologies. BIM technology supports the ability to condition the model data in a way that better supports construction activities. Conditioning workflows can be used to add construction level data to the model without requiring any additional native model parameter creation or management. It can assist in the delivery of construction ready models in a way to maximize collaboration and visibility to the materials and support change management. BIM during construction can assist in the key visual analysis that supports key decision making processes. As you can see in this example, powerful visualizations can be created through the use of color codes, which can assist in the scope understanding and design intent, as well as increase the identification of the high value work. Once the model has been conditioned, it is ready to support some of the specific construction planning mentioned previously. 
BIM directly supports the construction pool planning with powerful visualization and processes to collect key construction data, which directly supports construction planning sessions. As you can see in the example, by adding color coding in, a, in the model and organizing the data in a visual way, it can become a powerful tool in communication and support planning sessions and help the team to make key decisions based on accurate field information. It also makes the information easily accessible by the field and allow for a flow of that information from the field back to the BIM process. BIM technologies can also give the project stakeholders access to the BIM data they need during the construction phase, when they need it and from wherever they are using mobile technology. Information can be organized in a way that supports, simplifies, and makes available the interface for the use of critical information by the field and management staff on the project. Accessibility of this information by the field staff directly in the field helps ensure the accuracy of the data and provides real-time information to support critical decision-making and supports active planning and risk assessment. Now, Yark will walk us through some additional construction support functions that BIM can provide. Thank you, John. BIM and especially visualization has transformed the way architects design buildings. Visualization is not only an initial mock-up of plant facility, but also an enhanced communication and collaboration enable source of environmental impact analysis, the client's ability to analyze the design model, and the final shape of the investment. It is also an invaluable source of information for construction in the field of potential risk analysis and after conversion to virtual format, a source of training for construction workers before entering the construction site. The next level of BIM support for construction is the use of the 4D and 5D, which are time and cost. These new layers of information added to visualization enables simulation and the analysis of potential scenarios and to track the current state. It also allows the estimation of the size of the material storage area and the construction site, as well as the most efficient way to deliver materials, equipment, and vessels to the site. Design and construction 5D support combines information available from detailed design models, fabrication models, and installation plan. This kind of cost simulation is more detailed because of the greater amount of information available in fabrication models. As John mentioned earlier, the superpower of the simulation is the ability to add conditions, filter ranges, and combine information from external sources, such as data sheets, reports, etc. The ability and flexibility to define additional attributes allows you to include additional information for conditions. Real-time field progress supports construction installation progressing and provides critical data to the project team early in the process. Visualization and color code used for status, which support clear communication to team members and project management. We can see progress in the drawing. For example, a concrete contractor, which is already pulled, and that is waiting for concreting. Visualization is updated on a regular basis. This allows all participants to observe the progress of work and adjust their task to the delays, acceleration, in relation to the original schedule. It helps to conduct collaboration and communication in BIM team. Real-time field progress 
also enables integration with Power BI and data visualization in the form of a dashboard. There could be a wide range of reports based on the status of installation, which helps to quickly see the current project development. You can see installation status, what is fabricated, shipped, on site, and installed. This kind of dashboard helps also in collaboration with site teams to ensure that they have accurate and readable information to assist and help in timely decision making. The top curve visible in the dashboard is the erector plan to put up the steel and the little bright blue space next to each bar is the daily installed amount of steel. The gap visible in the diagram schedule is the time between the completion of the steel structure of the building and the construction of the pipe rack after the completion of part of the investment. It's a kind of daily snapshot in relation to previously planned schedule. And this enables yet another view of the construction status and to make quick and smart decisions. Now, John will talk about site integration. Great, thank you, Yorick. In addition to the BIM model and data flows, there are other technologies that support the construction process. We can review some examples that we see here on the screen, things such as Oxblue, time lapse, or drones to help make the project itself web accessible for team members and keep the entire team connected. As we've seen recently with COVID, it is more important now than ever to keep the teams connected to the project and bring the experience to the remote teams wherever they may sit. Now we'll look at a couple of other technologies that support construction execution. Things such as 3D photo integrated with floor plans can all help to be logged to log our job walks in our construction daily walks and provide teams with real time site conditions and also allow for side by side condition comparisons by date. Mobile applications make all of the information accessible to all project team members wherever they may be and as mentioned previously can be critical to keeping the teams connected. And as you can see in the photograph, it, it you can also see uh, comparisons between your model job walk and what is in the BIM model at certain points in time and is documented on the uh, the layout drawings. You can see those points and be able to track them over time. Now we'll take a quick look back on what we've talked about today. BIM processes are uniquely suited to support project execution throughout the project lifecycle. The name of the game is applying and simplifying BIM technologies in a way that maximizes productivity and provides better access to the critical data that supports early decision making abilities. BIM is more about process and to be aligned with current execution strategies. It's critical to find solutions that support the process in the most efficient and effective ways. Work with the process, not against the existing processes and reduce the work, not add work for the sake of technology. Innovation and growth in BIM is constantly changing and is key that we challenge ourselves in the application of BIM on projects and BIM technology so that we can provide powerful solutions to industry challenges and allow for a new level of information sharing and assist the teams in key decision making processes. Thank you so much for your time today. Back to the questions. Um, all right. So my, the question I was trying to ask Yark um, was what benefits does it bring to be aligned early with the project team on how BIM processes can be managed? It's a great question. Um, the major benefits uh, when we start align as um, early as possible, it's first, uh, we need to understand which data flow will be going on the project. 
uh, that uh, we need to understand what is described in the client documents like operation information exchange um, uh, ARR asset information and exchange information and uh, these documents will set up how we will manage the whole the data in the whole process from the engineering through construction to the uh, future uh, operation maintenance and facility management it's why it's important and also it's important that when we have um, additional parties for example at the some certain stage of engineering we can bridge how we will uh, manage between different system how the data flow will be going it's crucial for each stage thanks yarek all right um, the next question is for john so based on your experience what do you find to be the most challenging um, during each phase of the project regarding bim implementation that's a great question I think when we get established on the front end with the design requirements and you carry that through detailed design, we can have an, a, a great established flow. As you start to bring in your key vendors and key subcontractor uh, construction and fabrication models, I think that that is the phase that is, is the most challenging because you want to make sure that you're aligning these incoming participants into the process early and sometimes we don't always have control on exactly when those are brought into the project, but establishment of a, a general contractor or CM so, so that you can start getting your key subcontractors sub models and start that alignment process with them because there's a, a little bit of a revisiting of the BEP that needs to happen to make sure all the alignment goals around the required geometry and the re required data that's going to be expected for these key subcontractors and vendors can be one of the one of the challenges as challenging aspects because that's also the information that then you're going to flow for the project for turnover so i, f I find that to be the most challenging great thanks for that insight Okay, next question is to Yarek. Um, so in the presentation, the software vendor used seems to be Autodesk. Are there others that are competing with this technology? Um, and so do companies have choices? Um, it's an excellent question. As I stated in the beginning of my um, speaking, uh, we need to think that uh, this kind of project is certainly connected with architectural. And the main driver in, and solution which you can find is connected with uh, software, which is on the highest level for architectural. And uh, what is the best suited to manage all disciplines together? Uh, in our case uh, and our development, it's uh, mostly based on the Autodesk. Uh, we know that it's also probably other solutions, uh, but we try to be most efficient with the data and the managing uh, data in the same environment for all disciplines is the key to success with BIM execution. Thanks, Yarek. Um, so I guess either of you, the question could be for either of you. Um, so during an IPD project, how does floor manage an efficient turnover from engineering to construction? Uh, Yarek, I can, I can take a go at that. Um, I think that one of the most critical aspects is that turnover of that information. So it all comes down to the to the plan in the front end and the al the alignment of the flow of not just the geometry requirements from one phase to the next, but also the data requirements from one phase to the next. I think alignment up front of those data flows are going to be critical because you want to have that established starting point as you start your efforts when they flow from one phase to the other. So I think critical early alignment of the data requirements need to be included clearly in the BEP upfront. That makes sense. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thanks for that. Um, so also just following on to that, John, how does a, a client change their mindset of the team to adopt a BIM centric approach? That's an excellent question. I think it comes with that upfront alignment period it's critical when you're kicking off the project to have the client involved in the front end decisions that are being made. 
Um, there are standards that can be applied. I think Yark mentioned them earlier, things like EIR, which are exchange information requirements and asset information requirements. Those are intended to be client documents that help to involve them in the process that's going to be involved. But even if those documents don't exist, the alignment up front with that BIM execution plan to make sure that they that the goals and the uses that are established on the project meet their needs and expectations and keeping their involvement throughout the BIM process. All right, thank you. Okay, another one that came in here. Um, why should a client engage a project delivery partner early in the process and how can this aid in the preparation of the BIM execution plan? I will take this. Uh, um... It's uh, similar to what we described from the client's perspective. Also with this uh, project delivery partner, it's really important that when we suit him uh, to the project, we need to uh, define with him all potential gaps, which could be with data, uh, as uh, he can use different software. It could be also not everything which we use uh, in our terminology connected with 3D model, but it could be just uh, standard data with different formats. And we need to decide what should be bridged. And uh, also, as we have living document, which is BEP BIM execution plan, we also need to add this uh, content and find the best solution. The crucial will be following uh, the EIR and AIR and the data flow, which is requested for the kind of project and uh, use all the potential solution which came with software uh, to bridge everything. And when we meet really early with a delivery partner on the, on the project, we are able to make a huge progress and uh, remove any gap which can uh, provide some uh, losing of data. That's excellent, Yark. I wanted to add one thing to that. Also, it, it can increase your ability to get the project coordinated. The sooner you can start incorporating your detailed LOD 400 content and your in your specific items for the project and get them incorporated into the BIM environment, the faster that you can get things coordinated and out for fabrication and installation. That's a great point. John, so if BIM information isn't kept up to date, um, is the opportunity of utilizing BIM data lost or can it be brought up to date? That's an excellent question. Um, I think that that is always the challenge. There may be information that's not available at the time that maybe certain content is being delivered for BIM, but there is the ability to go back either in coordination with those spe specific suppliers to add the content, or there are tools that, such as what we were talking about today that allows you to add additional uh, data conditioning. And that's exactly what we were talking about. You can go back to using a, a tool that can add properties on top of the properties that were included in the model to add where you may have data gaps. And now that gap is, is linked to the models and available now for turnover. Well, speaking of tools, um, how, how do you identify what software is best to meet the needs of the project? I know someone earlier asked, you know, about us using Autodesk specifically, but, you know, if a client were to come to you and ask for some other um, sort of software to be used, how, how would you evaluate that and look at that? That's a great question. Sometimes it, it, it depends on the, the type of project that it is. But I think in standard, your your designers are going to come to the table with a with a BIM authoring tool preference. We usually try to go into the project with giving, not telling people specifically what they have to to use, but to uh, make sure that that is identified up front so that we can do any customization that we need with the BIM processes to make sure that we address any interoperability. And if there is a client's uh, specific request about a certain software suite, we would evaluate that on the front end to find out what um, could be done as far as what it is based on what the designers are planning to use at the front end. And later down the line, it can be a key decision point in selection of the contractors. The sooner we can align with the construction level content 
and key vendor suppliers also helps to complete that flow. We want to make sure that they can receive the BIM data in a way that minimizes how much rework on the BIM side they have to do, and they can take what has been given on the project and flow that through their fabrication processes. So you meant so that's great. And so you mentioned rework. So I guess this would probably be one way that you would choose to minimize rework. Are there are there others throughout this process that you use? Well, absolutely. The evaluation of the let's just use the contractors models as an example. A full evaluation, we try to work with them up front immediately so that we can minimize any impacts that they have in going from what is reflected in the BIM model throughout their fabrication processes. That's where some of those tools that we mentioned that you can use to help condition the data might help to arrange and organize things in a way that minimizes any rework from them, not just on a data perspective, but also in their content providing. Okay. I would like to add that it's also this uh, lean approach for the construction. I think perfectly is described in ISO 19650 when we're going from the previous mindset to uh, a level of geometry and level of information uh, to the phrase which say a level of information need. We try to be really consistent with information, um, but this information will be enabled for the data flow and move the collaboration and communication to the next level, but not with, by overwhelming uh, with data and making something like white nose of data, but to be really with the proper level to the, the face of the project. Yeah, that makes sense and sounds certainly important. Now, would you say that the, the BIM program support that you've developed um, specifically kind of in, in the manufacturing industries um, support a client's need for faster delivery from design to construction? Uh, I can take, I would say absolutely. I think it's almost, it's almost to the point where um, without it, can cause schedule delays potentially right off the gate. So I think early application of these BIM principles can help to make that flow from design to construction and construction to turnover in a way that will support the project through the construction. And there's a lot of opportunities in leveraging that technology to, uh, to be able to address schedule issues. That's great to hear. I'm sure everyone <laughs> wants their schedule to be faster, of course. Um, and and outside of this, so, you know, I think the example you used was the Novo Nordisk job. And, and I know a lot of obviously BIM is in buildings and architecture, but is, is BIM growing in other industries like like mining or um, energy production? Yeah, I can also. Yeah, I think it's uh, just something like mandatory BIM in many countries. For example, in mining in Chile is plenty of projects. Of course, it's it's different tools use it to follow, but we need to understand BIM is a process that BIM authoring tools could be different. It could be different in infrastructure when it's built, for example, Crossrail uh, in the UK. It could be different when it's uh, done mining construction plant uh, in, in Chile or when we do advanced technology or life science uh, buildings. Uh, that authoring tools must suit uh, the whole process in this industries. And I, and I would add to that as well that I think that some of those industries have been leveraging the technology, but maybe the terminology has been slightly different. I think managing 3D content and, and using 3D content to support the execution of projects is something that, for example, Energy and Chemicals has done uh, for a, a tremendous amount of time. But their terminology around um, saying it's BIM or, or, uh, or looking at the BIM concepts may vary. Makes sense, makes sense. Different terminology, different industries. All right, so I think this is the last, uh, Last question we'll have time for this morning. So, and I, I think this is a challenge that a lot of uh, clients or anyone really faces in today's day and age. So when you have a tremendous amount of data um, collected through a project, how can the project focus on the data that really, you know, makes the greatest impact or that they need to be looking at to, to move forward? It's an excellent okay. question. It's an excellent question. It's uh, what we describe in this project data requirements. Uh, we we can go 
with ability what have uh, software solutions we can create plenty of data but we need to at first understand what in the whole process will be required uh, then by this uh, kickoff meetings and appointments meetings we need to leverage uh, this uh, earlier mentioned uh, asset information exchange and, and uh, all these solutions which are provided up front and then we are able to find which data are crucial in some cases uh, we need to understand also the flow that uh, feeding the data will be flowing with the stage of the project when we have fabrication we get additional data and it's also important to find which data must be provided indeed embedded in the kind of 3d model and which data will be just going directly from the database to asset data management thanks yark any final comments to add john yark before we wrap up today no but i really appreciate everybody's time today and uh enjoyed it Excellent. Great thank discussion. You. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you guys again for uh, the interesting discussion and all of the effort you've put into the presentation. Um, so we will be hosting our next webinar on October 28th at 10 a.m. Central Time to discuss uh, modern modular modularization. Um, so we'll be addressing the traditional and emerging challenges and risks faced by projects. And the webinar will present and discuss the processes and systems um, developed by Floor to evaluate and select when to modularize, what to modularize, how to modularize with a specific focus on the shift from a tr traditional construction driven execution model to a more sustainable manufacturing based approach. Um, so if you are interested in attending, please follow our social media postings or head to the innovation builders page on floor.com to sign up for future webinars. We appreciate your attend, attend, attention and thank you again for dialing in today. If you have any questions or required if additional information, please email innovation.builders at floor.com and someone from our team will get back to you. From all of us on the Innovation Builders team, have a safe day. Mm -hmm.